Okay, yeah, welcome back guys. So today's video is just basically a continuation of the um, series I had started uh, around getting information around different uh, undergraduate programs. Um, and then today uh, we've got Vision to basically give us some background around his um, qualification on where he studied, uh, what's the name of the qualification and the courses he did and some sort of career prospects around the things you can do as far as jobs concerned after you graduate. Uh, hey, welcome, welcome Vision. Hey, welcome over here. Uh, good again. So we start with the first question, man. Um, so for your qualification, can you give us the name of your qualification for starters? Oh, so I did, uh, it's a BHSC. It's not a BSc, it's a Bachelor of Health Science. Mm -hmm. um, most people confuse it with a BSc. It's not a BSc. Okay. There's a major distinction between a BSc and a BHSc. Uh, okay. So the distinction is, there is a board, the Health Board of South Africa. It's called the Health Profession Council of South Africa. Okay. So that board is the one that gives guidelines for you to work with any human specimens or any human tissue. All doctors, or dentists should be registered by that board. So that's what, that's where the distinction is. Okay. And then the other one? So then, um, look. Because most of the thing is like, uh, oh, this is, I don't know, you're going to edit yeah. that part. The thing is with the, there's a lot of people who do BSCs and they're unemployed. Yeah. And they ask, why can't we get jobs? But they did a BSC, they didn't do a BHSC. Oh. So most of the people, like you do a BSC in biotechnology, BSC, or you can do a BSC in medical science. Yeah. But because you're not registered at HPCSA, we can't employ you. Sheesh. You did a similar course, but it's different. Uh, so I it's see. that. That's, so most of the people, like if you go on my Insta, on my LinkedIn, I explain to that, and I have like over fifty shares because most people did BSCs and they're unemployed. Yeah. Then, in the lab, we are short staffed because we don't have enough people because people are doing their own course. So they should be doing which one? The BHSC. BHSC. Yeah. So there's that. So now I don't know how to do that like properly. Yeah, now we can do that some other time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. I thought you just, yeah. I thought it's all BAC. Maybe. No, it's not BSC. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, look, just, just is some. The main question now is like, can you briefly explain, or can you did explain the brief uh, distinction of your degree? And then how did you initially hear about um, the course you're doing now? Did somebody tell you, or did you just out of your own curiosity find out that there's a course like this? Uh, so uh, when I was in, in high school in metric, I was interested in, I wanted to become a doctor. So then I, I researched on courses around, uh, around health, around medicine and what else can you do? And um, luckily I had my uncle who, who has a friend who works in the hospital. So I did career shadowing and I saw a head of, medical lab science because uh, medical lab science is basically a key in diagnosis of everything in South Africa okay like every specimen like if they did an operation they want to see if a patient has cancer all those things they come to the lab and the people in the lab they find out what's wrong with the patient and they tell the doctor so it's a key profession but a lot of people don't know about it because they people work in the background Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. And then, like, what was your sort of initial response um, from people when they heard you were studying? Uh, did, they, did they just assume that you're just doing a BSc like anybody else, or you're just doing? What, what was the initial response from people when they heard you doing the course? Uh, a lot of people don't know about the course. Like, a lot of people don't know about the course. Even now, like on YouTube, I'm the only person who speak about this course in South Africa right now. Yeah. And um, I get a lot of questions. People, they want to know, what can you do it? How can you do it? Because there's not enough information out there. Yeah. And uh, it's very true because in the labs, countrywide, we are very short staffed. We need more people. But I feel like there is no communication. People are not researching enough. And uh, those who get into the course, they usually get there by accident or I don't know, but there's a few people. 
do okay. because okay. we do need a lot of people. And then what's, what's sort of like the main misconceptions around uh, the courses you did uh, from people? Maybe, maybe there's this sort of misconception that people don't want to go there because maybe they heard something about the course. What's like the main misconception you hear uh, about your course from people? Okay, so it is uh, it's a challenging course. It's challenging in a case where you have to understand how the whole human body works before you find out what's wrong. So there's a lot of work, like there is a lot of work to be done. So if you start as a first year, the second years, the third years, they'll be telling that it's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of people drop out and so that's, there's that fear of failing because it's a lot of work. So, yeah. Yeah. Sounds like uh, exciting. <laughs> Sounds like exciting. And then, uh, so we get into the the core uh, courses within your qualification. Like, what are the main um, courses within your qualification? Oh, uh, so uh, the main courses that we do is anatomy. So anatomy, that is how the body works. So for the first year, the whole year, yeah. we study how the normal body works. So it's in chapters: the heart. Like life science in high school, yeah. you study the heart, you study the liver, you study the kidneys, you study the brain. That's anatomy, so that's the main course. Then in second year, we do pathophysiology. Pathophysiology is now what happens when there is a heart problem. So you need to understand how the heart works yeah. for you to understand what happens when it's abnormal and how yeah. do we test yeah. and how do we get to a conclusion that the heart is the problem in a person. So it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but those are the main causes. Yeah, jack of all trades in, in, <laughs> in medicine. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm just learning stuff now. Yeah. I thought you just do like a few courses and then you, you're done. And then for, for this course, because uh, a lot of people, you know, they might not be having the right combination of subjects in, in, in high school um, to qualify for the course. So what are the main um, sort of subject uh, that you need to in in your background to apply for this type of course. Okay, so it's uh, mainly a science profession. So we need mathematics, life science, and uh, physics. So, but mainly it's mathematics and life science. So if you have good marks in those, you're guaranteed to have a place in the medical lab science field. Huh? Okay. Hey, 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 okay. Okay, um, so for the challenges within the competition, um, the first question is like, what surprised you most while you were studying the course? What was like the main shock when you, start, when you first started uh, with, your, with your course? Uh, the main shock was um, how, much we did, how much I didn't know about the human body. And uh, like there is a lot, there is a lot of stuff like, um, when you get to third year, there is, you study cancers and there is a lot of them. Sure. Like, you just think that when someone says, no, someone has cancer, you think it's one thing, but cancers are diverse and there are a lot of them. And it became fascinating to me that I wanted to study more of the cancers. And um, I've majored in a field, but you can't finish all of them. There are a lot of them. And there is continuous learning. There's a new disease every day. Software updates. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Um. For then also um just on around your struggles, like what did you find most difficult um while you were doing the course uh, during the your university career? Okay. So um, you see, when you go to university, there is that freedom. You're not at home anymore. Yeah. You need to experience university, and also there is a lot of work. Yeah. So there was that struggle of trying to maintain a social life and, and the books. But uh, so people in this course in the career, because of the work that the workload, uh, yeah. we usually become antisocial. So it's more of those people who are willing to sacrifice their social life for a while yeah, yeah. and um, study hard because there is a lot of work, it's a lot of work, but it's doable. Yeah. And yeah. there is guaranteed uh, jobs after you're done. Yeah. 
as long as you do the right h or whatever yes. those letters you know, as long as you do the right letters not the <laughs> the other ones yeah not a bsc a BHS, yeah. yeah okay and then what type of resources um sort of help you excel uh in overcoming your challenges do you do you need to spend more time in the lab to learn about the different cancers or do you need to read more books or watch more videos okay so um uh so this it's not a theoretical course so only the first year and the second year is theory you need to study yeah. how things work and then the third year and the fourth year because we work in the lab we, f- yeah. we want to diagnose we want to run a test so that you can say okay this test shows this problem so it's more of application so we spend most of the time in the lab and um, the only way to learn more is to ask around be curious you want to know more okay why is it that this does this why is it that that does that so apart from only knowing how when a result is high what does it mean you need to understand the machines that are running the test as well yeah so there is a lot of machines there's a lot of automation that is involved if a machine breaks down in the lab yeah. you need to be able to figure out where is the problem and how to fix that yeah you so there's that like part cat well. scans or x-rays <laughs> no we don't use that uh, uh. we have machines that do like as a scientist like you know you guys think that we mix chemicals and stuff yeah but, and uh, but walter white <laughs> yes but now the machines does the mixing uh yeah so the machine does the mixing because the thing is we want an accurate result yeah and the machines does it accurately and faster and quicker yeah, yeah so yeah. there is a debate where people are saying but machines are replacing people but in science machines are helping us to get a quicker result and yeah. and and get a, a like a result so that the doctor can cure the patient quickly yeah. So there is that as well but yeah so the challenges are planning like you need to you need to have a diverse you don't have to have a closed minded you need yeah. to be open minded and be willing to learn every day oh, okay that's interesting interesting uh, and then like for you uh, what did you enjoy most um uh to, uh while doing the course like overall or was like the sort of the highlight um, like the key moments within within the course um so The thing is this course it's uh it's tricky for me to tell you what uh, I liked because you won't understand. Um in the lab for us to find out what's wrong with the people yeah we get if someone has severe diarrhea and like they have worms and stuff yeah for us to diagnose that we need their stool sample we need their feces yeah and uh, there is someone who's working in a lab who's sitting on a stool bench who's processing that to get a result so you, I, you wouldn't understand if i tell you that i enjoy being on a stool bench because it's someone's fecal matter that you're yeah. on a bench with but you learn a lot on that bench because like you learn a lot of parasites you learn a lot of, so it's an interesting bench Sheesh. and it's more manual it's more hands-on than other benches like other benches you just put a specimen in the machine and yeah. the machine gives you yeah. a result yeah so what was more interesting was how you get results from from a uh, from stool like for us to find what's wrong with the person yeah. like what bacteria it is we take that stool and we grow it for 2 to 3 days yeah sure. and once we grow that bacteria based on what tests we do on the bacteria we know yeah. what's wrong with the patient and what antibiotics can we use to kill it yeah. so then that's an interesting bench and that's the bench i enjoyed the most yeah. but to explain it to someone who's not in the field it's very yeah because we're trying tricky. to we're trying to kill bacteria and you guys are busy growing them so yes so <laughs> yeah we got listerine you kill 99% <laughs> detol 99.999% you guys are trying to make these bacteria live uh but then uh, that's, that's that's okay that, that's that's a new one for me uh, that's a new one and then what did you do, um what did you are uh, you enjoy uh most uh while doing the course like that's one thing like this is the thing i wish like they would remove or do less uh, within the course um there is like continuous learning like even now in the lab we have continuous learning to keep you sharp and stuff yeah, so yeah. that you're up to date with what's happening so we write a lot of tests and stuff so Sheesh. so you're still you get to 
be 40, 45, and they're still writing tests and exams, and yeah. that's not okay. So that's the one thing that I, I didn't like, but it's there to protect and help people yeah. who work give a better result. So yeah. it's, it's a double-edged thing. I didn't like, I don't like it, but yeah. we have to do it. Yeah. To help the yeah, no, I, I, I definitely enjoy that one for you guys because the, imagine now if you guys didn't do any tests and then there's, there's now COVID and somebody became uh, whatever BHSC maybe before new diseases came in. So there wouldn't be much use now given that there's like all these um, new diseases coming through. Uh, some of them are just becoming more resistant to drugs. Um, so now you still need to like sort of upgrade your software knowledge uh, every every day otherwise we, we will die uh, it specialists if you don't do your work then your pc just crashes these guys if they don't do the work yeah we, we won't be cured hey hey man i uh, know um and then uh so uh, around the last few questions um around just giving advice to people that are still trying to do the course maybe still in metric or still in high school generally um, then what type of skills will sort of help you excel in this type of um, the course you're doing? Uh, do you need more to be good at words uh, or more lenient to, to be good at numbers or do you need a mixture of both to really excel in uh, this course? You need a bit of both because we do a lot of calculations. We don't really do them right now because the machines does a lot of calculations yeah. for you. But you need to be able to understand why a result is like this. You need to be able to, to like extrapolate back. Yeah. Like, if something is wrong, you need to be able to calculate. Okay, maybe the machine is not working properly. Yeah. So you need to be able to. So there is that, and you need to be very curious. You need to be able. To, you need to be that person who's fascinated in learning new stuff and how yeah. things work. So that's the one skill that you need. Be very curious and sometimes it's tiring, sometimes it becomes boring because yeah. it's numbers and it's science. But you need a curious mind and that would help you a lot. Yeah, and then for for people that are still within the building uh, phase, within uh, I think high school, I think around grade, grade 9 and grade 10, you know, that's when you, you sort of branch out with your relevant courses uh, and then what would you give somebody uh, advice to those students like around the lower grades um, how will they better prepare themselves to to be at the top essentially to be best equipped you know to apply for these uh, roles um, do they need to spend more time in understanding the life science and physics uh, and maths as opposed to just getting good marks but not understanding because um, this whole thing of uh, we find ourselves in within our high schools where we we find ourselves getting good marks but the way we're getting these good marks is we get them because we're doing road learning so we 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 we, are tr we know how to answer questions because we've seen some of the stuff and then that kind of hits you when you have to go to the lab to do experiments and uh, you're writing reports so now it really tests your understanding of the work that you're doing you know you need to prove that now okay you got 80 percent in life science now you know you are gonna be in the lab um so for, for you what, what advice would you give to people that are still within the building phase do they need to make sure that they understand what they're doing not just repeating answers and getting good marks and not understanding yes yeah, so um a lot of people they think that okay let me not do pure maths because it's a, it's hard yeah. but they need to do pure maths like you know you, you shouldn't look at it like it's hard you should look at it as in this will help me in future yeah and uh, okay so early in the early when you are finding ways or how to cope with metric like what you said other people yeah. they they have a system or they memorize how to get 80 percent but yeah. they don't really and know the application and stuff yeah okay and that part it's how you cope with metric it's it's still okay but when you get to university you need to be able to adapt yeah adapt to 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 new phases yeah and uh, i've seen that happening in in the course because first year like i said it's mainly theory you yeah. just study the heart and you memorize it and you pass when you go to second year now it's application now you you have to apply and the application 
a question does it, you're given a scenario a patient came with this level of yeah. what this level of what and this level of what now you are given a, you're given like you're presented with a problem now yeah. you need to apply what you have learned yeah to get to the solution so then you need to be able to adapt because every scenario is different and yeah. use that knowledge that you have to apply in the situation you're given so uh, you need to be able to adapt to okay. the situation yeah, I mean we do we do cramming and and it, 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 we crash we crash and burn and yes. that, that doesn't always work um, I think I think especially we, if we're relating to your guys stuff where you have to be in the lab you can cram every scenario um, and how how the patient's heart is supposed to operate uh, so if you just memorizing stuff and now you're faced with real life problems uh, you might not uh, make it uh, well the patient might not make it <laughs> yeah, you, you, you the patient will not make you it. Don't, you don't want to be responsible. Yeah. You don't want to say someone has malaria yeah. and they don't have. And then they don't have it. Yeah, and then and then the, the last one is just basically um, around different um, career prospects within the profession. When 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 you graduate with your with the required with minimum required level of your degree, maybe it's honors level or degree, do you only go to one specific field or is there different? Um, fields you can go into after you're done with the qualification? Uh, so we have a lot of uh, specialities that you can go into. So when you qualify, um, so the course is it's a four-year course. Yeah. So the first three years, it's, they give you the basic information. Okay. Then in your third year, then you, the first six months of the third year, you need to you rotate in different types of the lab. So as so we have different types of the lab. We have uh, a microbiology lab. Mm -hmm. Microbiology lab, they look for bacteria, they look for viruses that causes diseases. Okay. We have uh, chemistry labs, they look for diseases that are mainly chemical diseases like your glucose levels, your cortisol. They, so there's different types of diseases. So there's a chemistry lab. Then you go to it's so, speaking Greek to me. Yeah, so then so there's <laughs> there's, 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 there's over this word, right? there's over ten different disciplines. Blood yeah. transfusion. Yeah. When you do, donate blood, blood comes to the lab. I understand. We separate blood. it and we 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 we, uh, we separate it and we preserve it. Yeah. And d depending on the situation of a person, then it we give the so we don't once you give us blood, yeah, yeah. we don't give that blood as it is to the next person. We separate it into different components. Like there's a person who's anemic, that person only needs red cells. So they don't need the other part of your blood. So we only give the red cells, it's called the packed cells. Then if a person has other diseases, like they don't have platelets, they have bleeding problems, yeah. we give them what you call the FFP. Uh, no, we give them what is called cryoprecipitate, that's your platelets. It helps them with the clotting disorders. Sure. And if someone is stabbed, it means that person is not anemic. That person just needs to get their volume up so that the, the heart can still pump. Yeah. Because if your blood is less, the heart will pump, but it's pumping nothing, so you will die. Yeah. So we need to up your volume. So then we give that person what we call FFP, that's fresh frozen plasma. So it's the different type parts of your blood. So there's a lab like that. There's yeah. different types of labs. So there's a lot of specialities. So now you choose based on your interest, what are you interested in? I specialize in cancers. I mean, I work in a cancer lab. So I do diagnose cancers almost every day. Sure. So now based on what interests you, you can go into different labs. And now these other things that you can do, we use a lot of machines. So the companies that make the machines and stuff yeah. they use people like us like because yeah. we understand how the machine works yeah you can go there you help in developing their machines and when we have a problem with the machines they come out and they fix the machines those people they give the same qualification with us yeah they make reagents so the chemicals that we use in the lab yeah they are made by other people and those people are still medical scientists yeah so there is a lot of places that you can branch into and okay. uh, so like if people have questions they can always comment under your video and yeah. respond yeah wait so you're telling me that the blood 
I thought, I thought somebody that needed blood, you take the blood and just give it to them. No, it doesn't work like that. So, so there's different plot, uh, parts within with your with yeah. the blood. So with your blood, when you get your blood, number one, we need to make sure that it's it doesn't have any infection. You are not HIV positive, so we test for it. Yeah. Then once we know that okay, there is no there are diseases that we mainly test for. So if you go for blood transfusion, they ask you if you've been in America in the past ten years because there is this med cow disease, and that can be transmitted by blood so we don't need that we don't need to give people that we test if there's diseases then after that we separate that blood we separate it into only red blood cells for people who are anemic then there's the rest of the blood is the volume of the blood it's just like the water part it's called ah. plasma so that plasma is for people with low volume people who if you're in an accident you lose a lot of blood yeah you don't need the red cells your red cells will be fine but you, what you need is the volume, so they give you the plasma. There's people with like clotting disorders and stuff, they need platelets. Sure. So we give them another component of that blood, it's called the cryoprecipitate. So there's different components of your blood. Yeah. So, Man, this is Greek to me, bro. <gasps> so it's... This is Greek. I only, I only know life science, but I think grade, as a grade 9, I think the nucleus was the last <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 the, it's a lot. It's interesting, but uh, once you're in there, it's it's doable, and it's fun. Ah, yeah, no, I mean, uh, thanks for the for, for the uh, intro. Uh, I've I've learned a lot uh, from the from the video. Um, I thought blood was just liquid. You just give it to somebody else. You just test, <laughs> and then you just pour it to somebody else. Uh, didn't know you have to break it down. Uh, we, um, we so it down. no, so hopefully the video becomes beneficial to somebody who's thinking of doing a publication. Um, and then hopefully um, it will make a difference. People that are thinking of doing the uh, this collaboration, may, or maybe you know somebody might be keen on doing something uh, like this. Then you just let them know that there's a video like this. Uh, anyway, thanks for coming, Vision. Uh, I've learned a lot today. Um, okay. that's, it, that's it for me. Thank you for inviting me. It was fun. <laughs>